Hi, in today's tutorial we're going to talk about gradients. I'm going to show you how to build a gradient similar to this that you can use for a background. I'm also going to show you how to make a selection and fill it with a gradient, which is how I built these borders. I'm also going to show you how to put a gradient in some text. And I'm going to show you how to put a gradient into a shape. So let's get started. Let's start with a blank document. Now the gradient tool is this one over here. It has a rectangle with a gradient in it. If you click on that, down here you get some different options. Under the gradient, if you click on edit, you'll see all the different gradients that are available in Photoshop Elements. And this is a drop down menu that you can use to pick different gradients that are available. We're just going to leave it on the default right now. And we're going to pick this gradient right here. Click OK. To draw a gradient, you just click and drag while holding down the mouse button. And if you drag a short line, you'll see that the gradient, the transition in the gradient is very small. If you draw a longer line, then the transition is longer. If you go right from the top to the bottom, you get the full gradient in. And you can even zoom out, and you can even drag your gradient from out here, and you'll just get a part of that gradient in there. We're just getting the middle part of this red part. So let's bring that back up. You can drag it at a different angle. If you hold down the shift, it will constrain the angles to 45 degrees. You can see that my cursor is way over here to the side, but it's still, still drawing a straight line. Or you can go at 45 degree angles. Uh, these are the different kind of, of gradients you have. The linear gradient, the radial gradient, the angle gradient, the reflected gradient, and the diamond gradient. And if you just hover over it with your mouse, you'll be able to see what they are. This is the opacity and reverse, reverse, transparency, dither, opacity, all these things we're going to go over a different way. We're going to see how to make this a different way because if you draw this, you'll see that the gradient is right here on the background. I can't go in and edit this at all. The only way I can edit that is to just draw another gradient. But I'm going to show you a way that you can make a gradient and edit it over and over again. I'm not going to use the gradient tool. Let's just fill this with white. We're going to go up here and just click on the, the adjustment layer icon up here. Click on it and the drop down menu comes up and we can we can click on gradient. And that gives us a gradient adjustment layer and it opens up this gradient fill dialog box. Here we can click on gradient and it opens up the gradient editor. Here we can pick on any of the gradients that are available in Photoshop Elements. We're just going to stay with default. We'll pick this one again, which is the one we had before, and you get the same thing. Click OK there. But now you can see this is all editable, or before it wasn't editable. You can pick radial which goes from the center out. You can click on angle and that draws the gradient in a clockwise direction beginning here and going around and ending up here. You can use the reflected which reflects your gradient. So your gradient actually goes from here to there and then it's reflected. Or you can do the diamond and the diamond is just like the radial draws from the center out but it's in diamond shape. Usually uh, you'll use the radial or the linear most. We'll just keep it on linear. Now the angle, you can determine the angle by just dragging this line around. You can see how it moves and you can see the numbers over here moving. You don't have to redraw the gradient. You can just change the angle that way. Let's put it back to 90. 90 is the straight up and down. Here's the scale. You can scale that. Remember, 
uh, when we when we drew our gradient, we just drew a small line to get a, a small transition, or we drew a large line to get a large transition. You can change that right here in the scale, and you can just click on the scale word and drag. And you can get a small scale, small transition, or you can get a large transition, just like we did before. We'll just keep, or you can click on that arrow and just use the slider. We'll just click on that and give it 100 because we want to leave it at 100. Now down here we have reverse. That'll reverse your gradient. We have dither. Lots of times in a gradient you'll see some little lines going through it back and forth. That's called banding. And dither will eliminate or lessen that banding effect. Align with layer. Align with layer uses the bounding box of the layer or a selection on the layer to calculate the gradient. So right now it's aligning with the layer. The layer is the entire uh, canvas here, our entire artboard. So it's going from the top to the bottom and it's using that to calculate where the uh, gradient is going to go. Say OK here. Let's come up and grab a, a marquee and we'll just draw a square in there. Now let's go up to the adjustment layer, do a new gradient adjustment layer. And you can see that it made a layer mask here. So we all we're going to see is this square. We've got the gradient fill box. We can click on the gradient and we can just select the same gradient that we had. And you can see Let's click OK on that. You can see that it's using, because we have a line with layer, it's using that selection that we had on our layer to build the gradient. Now if we click that off, watch what happens. It looks like it disappears. But if you click off of that, it's still there. Let's click that back on, click that back on. Because we clicked off the Align With layer, now it's using the entire canvas, the same as this first layer is using. If we click Align With layer, now it's going to use that box right there, our selection that we made, and that's how it's going to, to draw the gradient. So that's what Align With layer is. Usually you'll want to leave Align With layer on and dither on all the time. So let's click OK on that. Let's go ahead and uh, delete that. We don't need that anymore. I want to show you how to edit a, edit a gradient. So if you click on that, again, we get our gradient fills. Click on the gradient. In this gradient editor, you can edit your gradients. Down here, these are called stops, color stops. And on this gradient, we have three because we have the blue, the red, and the yellow. On other gradients, for example this one, you just have the black and white. Now you can edit those by selecting one of them. Let's select the center one. And you select it and this triangle turns black. And now you can edit it. You can click on this color swatch and it brings up the color picker and you can change the colors. Let's change it to a green. Click OK. And now it's a green. You can see it did that up here. Uh, in real time on our art. Now you can move these stops around. Just click on it and drag it. And you can see what it's doing to the gradient here. You can also see what it's doing to the gradient here. Yeah. You can see what it's doing. Let's put it back in the middle. You can also move these little diamond shapes in here. This is this determines where the the blend is going to be. So if you slide this over See the blend is going to move uh, closer to the to the solid blue. Here the blend is going to move closer to the middle up here. Usually those will be about halfway and you can look at your numbers here. And that's how you can do that. Now you can delete stop by just clicking it. You can either click on the trash can or you can just drag it down out of the way. Up here, these stops on the top are for the opacity. 
and you can add a stop by clicking up there that's the one selected because it's got the the black triangle it's a 14 percent opacity and you can see the the checkerboard in there that that uh, shows the opacity you can increase the opacity to 100 percent therefore it's opaque or you can decrease it to zero if you want just by using the slider or by clicking on opacity and just dragging we'll keep it at 100 actually we'll get rid of that because we don't need that that's the opacity these are the colors let's go ahead and add that that red swatch back in there you can add a swatch by just clicking right there and it adds a swatch it actually added the red swatch back in there we've been using this type solid all this time if you use this noise look what it does it gives you some different effects you can drag the dark slider over and it changes the colors you can drag the white slider over that'll change the colors so you can you have a lot of control over what you want to do if you drag this roughness down then it makes it a real smooth transition if you drag it all the way up to 100 you've got a lot of different colors in there and you can click randomize and it'll just change and go give you random patterns all the way along and you can just keep clicking it until you find one you like I kind of like that one let's use that one let's click OK now we can rotate that a little bit maybe about like that we'll go about like that and click OK and then we can bring the opacity down just a little bit and that I think is a pretty cool background it's kind of like this one it's not exactly like this background but it's close because you because by clicking that random you get different backgrounds every time now you can make a plat effect if you want by just copying that layer double clicking on that top layer and changing the angle of that top one just a little bit and you get a plat effect so you can create a plat effect you can just create stripes I think I prefer just the just the line so I'm gonna go ahead and delete that but I wanted to show you how you can do that I want to make a selection I want to make a border around here so what I'm going to do is drag some guides over so that I can see what I'm doing and you can see up here on the ruler where I'm going I'm going right to three quarters of an inch and down three quarters of an inch and these guides can help you I'm gonna give this three quarters of an inch all the way around and then I'm going to get this marquee tool the rectangular marquee tool I'm gonna to click right there where those guides meet and drag out to where those guides meet and that gives me a selection you can see the marching ants around there now I want to put this on a new layer so I have a new layer there and I'm going to fill that whole selection with any color it doesn't matter I just need a color so I get the paint bucket and I'll just fill it with this foreground color okay there we go now with the marching ant still going I can go up here to select modify contract and I'm going to contract that selection by 50 pixels click OK now I want to just get rid of the color inside of that so I can just hit delete and now we have a border now I want to put a gradient inside of that so I need to select everything on that layer which is just which is just that border so I want to select everything on that layer and I can do that by hitting command or control if you're on a PC and just click on that layer and that selects let's turn that background layer back on so you can see that selects the whole border now I can go up under the gradient adjustment layer I can click on the gradient I can select that gradient that we had before click OK and there it is 
Now I want to duplicate that. I want to put another one on the inside of that one so we have like a double border. I'm going to do that by, by making a copy of this layer right here. And I can do that by dragging it up to the new layer icon or I can just hit Command or Control J and that makes a copy. Now I want to put this copy right on top. I want to make that smaller. So I can go up here under Image, Resize, Scale. And with this selected in the middle, it's going, it's going to scale from the middle. And I just want to go 95%. Now that made another, another border inside the first border. Now we would need to put a gradient in that. So we'll do it the same way. We'll just get a gradient layer up there click on that now you can see because that wasn't selected it didn't give me a layer mask there so it's covering the whole layer I want to reverse that let's click OK let's reverse that click OK there now we can clip that to that layer by holding down the option or the alt if you're on a PC see the little square you get there with the arrow going down click on that and now that clips it to that layer so there's two ways you can make that border you can have a selection active and then when you make your adjustment layer it automatically puts a layer mask on there or you can just have a regular layer make your adjustment layer and then clip the adjustment layer to your layer so now we've got those let's turn this layer back on and see what we've got that's what we've got now I think it looks pretty cool let's do some type okay type is the same way you just click on the type we've got Bradley handbold that's good 300 points that should be should be big let's put some type in there Click the check mark, move it, move it onto our space here. Now we want to put a gradient in that type. We can do that by coming up here and creating a gradient layer. Click on the gradient. Let's add this same gradient we had before. OK. Say OK. Now it's going over the whole thing, so we want to clip that to the type layer. So hold down the Option or the Alt clip it to the type layer now we can go in here and we can modify this just a little bit if you want we can change the angle we can change the scale make it a little bit smaller we can move it we can reverse it if we want click OK now you have your type. Now this type is completely editable because we clipped it to this. We can make any changes we want on this type layer. Let's grab this and just change it. We can change the type any way we want. We can also uh, add the layer style to it. Let's come up and say uh, layer style, style settings. Let's give it a drop shadow. And you can give it this drop shadow, give it a little angle there. Give it a drop shadow. We can give it a stroke. We can make it any way you want. We can we can edit it all. We can edit it all day. Now we want to bring in a shape. Let's bring in this shape. Let's bring in an apple. So we bring in an apple. There's our apple right there. Now we want to put a gradient in that apple. So how do we do it? Adjustment layer, gradient. Click on the gradient we want. Let's build a gradient that is kind of a light, light red, maybe even a pink. Let's go up here to the reds and go maybe light red, maybe like that and to a deep dark red 
deep dark red right up in that corner. We want it to be opaque, so let's go ahead and take that to 100%. Okay. Now we want it to be a radial gradient. Radial. And we want to move it down here a little bit. Let's just click OK and see where we're at. Let's clip that first. Option or Alt, clip it to the apple. Well, now we can look at it and see. Let's go back to this gradient fill. And we're going to scale it. We'll take it down a little bit. And we'll move it maybe up into this corner. There you go, you have the apple filled in with the gradient. It's a radial gradient and we can scale it however you want. I mean, it's completely editable. Let's click OK. So there you go. So that's how you work with gradients. Um, I don't use this gradient tool over here at all. I use the adjustment layers because that makes them all editable. You can go in and change them. You can come back next year and open this file up and change your gradient, gradients. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.